Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SOLIDWORKS video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. In Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production modeling of this uh, work flashlight uh, for mass production. And when creating tooling ready geometry, we need to ensure that we have the uh, correct draft at the parting line. So the very first thing we do is uh, define the parting line. So the housing of the flashlight is going to be injection molded and any uh, molded part requires draft. The first step is to define that parting line. Uh, it's very difficult to add draft to surface features um, after the fact. We actually have to build draft into a lot of our features instead of relying on the draft tool to add draft after the fact. So created a uh, draft reference surface here and I first need a sketch to create that. And so this sketch is um, converted from our layout sketch uh, that we talked about in the previous installment. So all of these um, entities have the on edge relation. You can see here. And so then I've used this sketch to create surface extrude. And in the surface extrude, I have uh, turned the draft on and I've set it to be two degrees. And if I show this surface, and let's use the right plane as our reference, and two degrees for the necessary texture on this part, we'll see that our draft reference surface has two degrees all the way along here. And when modeling with draft, a nice thing um, I like to do is under my equations, I've actually uh, set up a global variable for draft is equal to, uh, to two. That way, uh, anytime I need to uh, you reference that uh, that angle, I can just hit equals draft, whether it be a dimension or property, and now I've linked that um, that dimension to that draft angle. So I'm going to start by uh, creating this first shape here, and it's important to note that with, with curved shapes, I need to build draft into these shapes. So here I'm trying to uh, match the shape of the battery, and I'm not going to be able to match it perfectly, but I'm going to be able to get really close. So what I've done here is created a horizontal center line, and then another center line here, and then added that uh, draft global variable to set the angle. And I made this spline tangent, and here I can just kind of use the um, handles of the spline to try and to match the shape as close as possible. So I've actually built draft into the sides of this uh, this shape here. If we were to turn on the, the draft analysis tool, the right plane, two degrees, we'll see we've built the correct draft angle into this uh, part, two degrees right at the parting line. So now I'm going to uh, shape the top of this part. I'm going to need to use a uh, boundary surface to do that. And so I've created a uh, new sketch plane here and on that sketch plane I have the sketch here and note that once again I have that uh, draft as required that two degrees uh, this is actually converted from an entity in the front layout sketch um, and that's why this is a driven dimension but I have that two degrees and now to create this uh, first surface I have this edge. Actually, let's just hide this body so we can see this a little better. So to create this surface, I have that sketch I've used here and I'll select in direction two. In direction one, I'll select this edge of this face and tangency to face to ensure that the surface is tangent to the draft reference to ensure our two degrees. And I'll need to increase the tangent influence slider to 100% inflates the surface a little bit more and gets through that inflection that was uh, that was previously there. So if I um, show that main mass again, we'll see that we need to combine this new crown top face uh, into this uh, extruded block. And I could use surface cut if the... Um, however, I can't use that here because this surface actually is a little bit taller than this. So I'm going to use replace face instead. So what replace face does is uh, take a face in the model and simply replace it with another face. So I'm taking this top face and replacing it with that boundary surface. And there we go. And to uh, just to be nice and clean, I want to be able to clean up my surface features when I'm done with them. I'm going to select that body with delete body and note that I can't delete this boundary surface feature because I need the geometry that the feature creates so I'm going to 
uh, use a separate body delete feature to, to remove uh, that surface after I replace the top face. So I'm going to define the parting line with a reference surface with draft. Uh, it's helpful to create a draft global variable. I'm going to use solid features to start the shapes. You know, I'm going to get as much as I can with the solid features. Um, everything's relatively blocky and the solid fit feature always creates a closed volume. Then I can use some cuts to shape it. So whenever possible I'm trying to use solid features and then I'm going to sculpt them with the surface features. Um, I get a whole lot more. I get at least six faces when creating an extrude like this. I get the top, the bottom, and the four sides versus a surface feature I may only get a couple faces at a time or one face. So Solid modeling is always faster, but surface modeling gives us more control to sculpt organic shapes. I need to be remember to build draft into features, and I'll just reference that draft global variable because with curved shapes I can't use the draft tool after the fact. Um, then I'll create that topped crown surface using the boundary surface tool. Remember that I always anything that uh, hits that parting line needs that tangency to face, and I may need to increase the tangent influence slider to have a, a clean uh, termination at the parting line instead of a dip there. And finally I'll use replace face to, uh, to add that new boundary surface into the model. So follow Demonic Group on LinkedIn where we'll be announcing new videos uh, on a weekly basis. Thanks for joining us.